Hello and welcome to another edition of Sand Shark Bites. I'm your host, Justin Jarrett. Joined as always by the man with diamonds on the soles of his shoes, James <laughs> A. Duffy. Professor Duffy, uh, known around here as simply Duffy. And uh, we're back with another edition of Sand Shark Bites. Uh, plenty of news to talk about this week and almost all of it good. Uh, you know, we, we start out uh, at the top of the show just talking about Jason Boulay, who uh, his, his story continued to garner more and more attention uh, last week, hit the national uh, websites, um, Sporting News, Sports Illustrated, USA Today, uh, Los Angeles Times, you name it, just about everybody picked up on that story. And it really capped off his last start. He got yeah, the, and, he and then he wound up on Fox News the day after he, uh, he went six, uh, went two innings, pitched to six batters, got them all out. Uh, pretty awesome performance by Jason to cap off what's been a pretty awesome week for him. Uh, we'll have Coach Brian Llewellyn on in a few minutes, and, and he'll talk a little bit more about Jason and, and that story, which uh, I think everyone is pretty familiar with now, so we won't, uh, we won't go into it too much uh, today, but uh, been a really cool experience with him. But also, lots of great stuff going on uh, between the lines as well. Uh, five Sun Conference players a week from USCB this week. Let's see if we can run them all down. Junior De La Torre is your baseball pitcher of the week. Uh, softball swept. Matty Bird, the player of the week. Ashley Lehman, the pitcher of the week. Betsy Douglas, women's track athlete of the week. And uh, Tori DeGroote Tori is your DeGroote. women's golf player of the week. So, Anchor player uh, right there for you. What a week for USCB. And then... To make things even better, on Monday or on uh, Tuesday, rather, we found out that Ashley Lehman had been named the NAIA National Pitcher of the Week for softball. I believe that's the first time USCB has had a National Player of the Week. I, I can't be 100% on the time before I came on board, but uh, but I'm pretty sure about 99%. Because all those records time. are written on like the back of cocktail napkins and matchbooks and uh, exactly yeah the, it was a uh, it was a simpler time less, less back formal then. less formal yeah. certainly there was a little bit more uh, likelihood that something slipped through the cracks. And speaking of slipping through the cracks, uh, many of those cracks are now gone as we have seen those dastardly trailers being shipped off campus. Uh, For those of you that loved our athletics trailers before we moved into the recreation facility there, the trailers are almost all gone. A little piece of us is gone, but it's that dark... Cancerous. Cancerous, (laughs) yes, uh, tumor uh, of us that is gone. So the dastardly trailers have been shipped off at last. It's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> um. uh, yeah, lots of, lots of good stuff going on. Obviously, with all the uh, Sun Conference Players of the Week, that, that means that uh, things are going well on the field. And I guess we'll, uh, we'll start at the top of that list with baseball. Um, just took one out of three from George Gwinnett last weekend, but it was uh, a, a good win. I mean, number five team in the country right now. Um, we beat them 10-2. to two. Junior pitched just incredibly. 11 uh, strikeouts for his 11 personal 11 strikeouts. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a career high and one off the school record set by Michael Heesh, who uh, incidentally just <laughs> reported to Myrtle Beach for his uh, fourth season of pro ball. Be driving up the, the coast this summer. We're going to go see some games. Go yeah. see the Pelicans. Uh, if you're if you're coming down to Carolina, you can go up to Myrtle Beach and check out the Heesh man in action. Hopefully not for long. He'll hopefully be moving on to Tennessee and AA in a little while. But uh but yeah, that's good news to have him back in the in the South Carolina region. Um, we'll have Lou Ellen on in a little bit. We'll talk a little bit more about baseball. So let's uh, let's shift gears to softball. And uh, the number of the week is fourteen. Ernie Banks. I like it. I'm a Cubs fan. I like fourteen. That's a, that's a good one. Let's play two. Uh, Sandshark softball won two more on uh, Tuesday, and that's fourteen in a row now. That matches the longest streak in school history, and they jumped up eight spots to number fourteen in the national rankings. So. Everything going in the right direction for them. They got two more on Friday at Coastal Georgia and then two on Saturday at home against Weber International. An odd start time for that one at 11.30. So uh, get out to the ballpark a little early, 11.30, a little softball for brunch. And uh, conference games against Weber International, trying to stay unbeaten in conference and keep moving up those rankings. And hopefully, uh, well, probably not in time for next week's show, but hopefully late next week we'll have uh, some good news about a, a national championship opening round bid. Uh, it's, hopefully it's, it's two hopefully weeks we'll be till, back in there. Yeah, two weeks till those, those, those games start. And uh, the semester's coming to an end real fast. It's, it's time to start buckling down and we've got to finish the, the athletic season strong, but there's also all these academic little hobgoblins rooting around in finals week. And yeah, that's a, that's a tricky thing about <laughs> athletics. You know, you start heading off to, to conference tournaments uh, at the time of finals. And so uh, I have a people 50 like... have a 50-point fill-in-the-blank quiz on Midsummer Night's Dream that you still got to take <laughs> care of. 
Jeannie Murphy will have to uh, make the road trip with a couple of teams, I'm sure, and proctor some exams. That should, that's should that got to be fun because uh, that, you know those athletes, that's what they always want to think about is exams while they're there to play in their conference tournament. But uh, that's the trick of, of balancing it all. And, uh, you know, we saw Jason Boulay this week, a, a guy who really has it in perspective as far as uh, – where everything falls in and your priorities, and, and hopefully our student athletes keep that in mind as well as, as the semester wraps up. Uh, more great news on the uh, a track as well. Uh, we mentioned Betsy Douglas, who put her name in the record books three more times and qualified for nationals in two more events. She's now qualified in the marathon, the 800 and the 1500, and uh, has a pretty good chance at qualifying in the 5000 as well. She's just a remarkable kid, remarkable runner and continues to lead the way, and we continue to, to rewrite the record books. I, I was counting the other day, and I think uh, we're into the 20s now in the number of school records for track and field that have been set this season. So it's, uh, and some of those have been set and then broken again. Yeah, so it's, it's, it, it's just been phenomenal to see what they've done, and they continue to make strides on the track. The track and field team has really, really shown up this year. I mean, there's 50 people on the roster for it. So you yeah. there's, there's so many people involved with it, and they're really, out there promoting it too, and they're talking about it in the classes and on in, on campus. It's it's really great to see that this program is finally getting its due um, in in on the field, on the track, and uh, in the news as well. I think uh, they've been largely overlooked um, past few years. And, yeah, you know. it's hard when you don't have a, a home uh, home competition. You know, you can't compete at home. It's hard to get folks to kind of take take notice of you, but uh, hopefully looking, that's coming down the pike. You we're know, looking to change it. Be uh, Becky Hayden is presenting at Research and Scholarship Day on April 20th in Hargrave where all of the, the student scholarship uh, pro projects are being posted. If you want to come and take a look, Becky Hayden's is a proposal on why the university needs its own track and field facility where she's established a claim that we do, and this is what we're going to need to get it done. We won't uh, get any argument from this guy. We definitely need it, and hopefully it will uh, come to fruition in the next couple of years, but uh, never know. Uh, we'll never have a golf course on campus, uh, most likely. I don't. Miniature we have a golf, lot of land, maybe. but maybe not that <laughs> much land. But we got a beautiful one. We play at out in old at an old field. And uh, and speaking of that golf team, Alan Cook with a individual championship. What a comeback for that guy. He tore his tore his knee ligaments playing uh, flag football last fall, and he got back out there just a few weeks ago at the Sandshark Classic, and now he's got another win under his belt. Uh, phenomenal comeback. He shot a 66 in the final round, bogey-free, uh, at the Golf Week NAIA Invitational, which was a crazy good field. Uh, nine top 25 teams in that field. Uh, USCB had a great final round and came in fourth, which is a pretty good showing. Uh, the three who finished ahead of us, I believe all top 11 teams in, uh, in the NAIA. So. Uh, good showing and uh, really looking good going into the conference championship in a couple of weeks. Outstanding. What else we got? I think we ran it all down. Women's golf mm. had the week off this week after Tori won uh, for her performance last week. Keep an eye um, out for club sports, club soccer, club uh, rugby. There's some talk of club lacrosse. I know there's some interest in that. Well, I don't the, know how far along we've only got, got so much space, but we got some we got some players out there ready to play some different games and come out and play for fun. So I see some lax uh, some lax bros out there on the field from time to time chucking yeah, it around. That's, that's always trouble when you got a rugby team and a lacrosse team on the same campus. They're always jockeying for the same space. Yep, yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> under the influence of. Uh, of proper sports. faculty support. They're, that's what they are, they're under the influence of. They're under the influence of, of, of responsible adult behavior. You've taken on quite a, a challenge in keeping the rugby team in line. The We're club, club, club the rugby. rugby club at USCB, keeping them in line. I'm trying to do my best. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's been an awesome week to be a sand shark. It's always great to be a sand shark, but this week particularly good. Uh, everything was coming up Millhouse, as uh, we Simpsons fans would say. And uh, just been an awesome week. And hopefully more of the same coming this weekend. You know, we mentioned softball at home on Saturday. Baseball will be down at Southeastern on Friday and Saturday for a big Sun Conference series. And uh, here to tell us more about that, I sat down with Brian Llewellyn here on Sand Shark Bites. Joined now on Sand Shark Bites by USCB baseball coach Brian Llewellyn, uh, becoming a frequent guest on the, yeah. on the program. We, we only have so many guests to go around, so, right. so everybody has to uh, do their... Do their uh, their job, but uh, always great to have you on, Coach, and uh, and a lot of stuff to talk about. It's it's been an exciting couple of weeks for USCB baseball, mm -hmm. and it starts off the field. Uh, a lot of attention for uh, all the right reasons. A great story with Jason Boulay, who we had on the show last week, and um, I know it's it's been a 
a pretty moving thing for you, a, a pretty moving experience to be involved with all that. And uh, I know you're very proud of, of Jason and his decision to give bone marrow and, um, and, and had the opportunity to talk to a lot of media about that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, does it continue to, to kind of just uh, nest in your brain? You, you're still thinking about it a lot? Yeah, it does. I mean, anytime uh, somebody uh, takes something upon themselves like that and, and, and makes a commitment and, and, and the sacrifice that he's made, I mean, that, that's something that'll stick with you for a long time. And, and I'm ob obviously very proud of Jason. Uh, anybody who's been around uh, college athletics, professional athletics knows the, the commitment that guys make to, to their field, their endeavor. and, and uh, when you, uh, when you sacrifice something like that uh, to, to help somebody out, uh, it, it's tremendous, uh, tremendous respect for Jason and what he's done, and, and uh, that's going to stick with me for a long time. You know, I thought what was uh, pretty impressive about Jason this week is it certainly has been a, a distraction for him, you would think. It, a lot of uh, media attention, national media attention, mm -hmm. went on Fox News, everything else. Uh, but he goes out there on, on Saturday against the best hitting team in the country right. and goes six up and six down and, and look the best I've ever seen him pitch. I mean, that was really impressive to me that he's able to put that stuff aside and go out there and get his job done. Yeah, that's kind of who Jason is. Um, you know, he, he really doesn't uh, have anything that distracts him. He's that guy that goes about his business every day regardless of whether it's doing a uh, uh, interviews on national television or, or, or pitching the seventh and eighth inning. Um, you know, he, he's the same guy all the time and, and doesn't uh, really seem to be distracted by anything. So uh, really proud of how he's handled himself, carried himself through all this and, um, you know, obviously what he's doing. And uh, speaking of impressive pitching performances against Georgia Gwinnett, top hitting yeah. team in the NAIA, and Junior De La Torre goes out there on Friday in the first game of the series and uh, shuts them down. Six and a third, uh, only gave up one run, and that was after he left the game, took a shutout into the seventh, and uh, struck out 11, which was just one off the school record set by Michael Heesh. So uh, just an awesome performance by Junior. Did pick up Sun Conference Pitcher of the Week honors. And uh, you had to, to be impressed with what Junior did and excited about uh, him pitching the way he is going into the stretch run of the season. Yeah, yeah, very excited about it. I mean, Junior's had some of those performances already this year. Uh, he, he threw the ball really well against St. Thomas. He pitched well against Embry-Riddle. And he's a guy that, that wants the ball in that situation. He knows what he's capable of and, and uh, doesn't back down from a challenge or anything like that. And, and uh, so, so really proud of how Junior handled that. Um, you know, obviously, George Gwinnett's a, a very good ball club, swinging the bat, uh, and uh, uh, you know, Junior went right after him and, and gave him everything he could handle, and, and uh, came out on the good side of it. So uh, that that's that's who Junior is, and and um, you know, not to downplay it at all, uh, but that we know what, what we're going to get out of him each time out, and and um, you know, that that's who Junior is. He wants the ball in that situation, and so. Uh, you know, was very pleased with how he uh, how he performed uh, Friday and and uh, did a tremendous job for us. Be looking for another great performance from Junior on Friday uh, at Southeastern. That's going to be mm -hmm. a big series. Southeastern uh, still in the receiving votes category in the top 25. They're a half game ahead of us in the Sun Conference standings, which just a, a factor of them uh, having a game rained out, but a half game difference there. So that three game series is going to go a long way toward the seeding in the Sun Conference tournament. And uh, if we can take two out of three, it'll be looking pretty good for maybe the three or four seed going into the tournament. Uh, Kind of give us a, an idea about the series this weekend. Yeah, I mean, uh, Southeastern's a ball club that, that, that always plays the game hard. They, they play well. Uh, obviously, they're playing well now and in, in receiving votes, and deservingly so. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's always a good matchup. It's always a good competition when we go down and play those guys or when they come up here. And, and uh, really just looking for the same things that we have our, all, all year out of our ball club. Uh, just play the game hard, play the right way, have fun doing it. And if we do those things, we'll be fine. Um, you know, not concerned about that. Obviously, to, to go down there and match up with a good team is what we, you know, what we plan for, what we prepare for, and why we do it. And uh, so, so looking forward to that. All right. Well, keep an eye on the, uh, the website and the social media for results from this weekend. Uh, I'm sure Southeastern will have live video and, and live stats down there. Donnie Smith does a great job down there with uh, their sports information. So keep tabs on the Sand Sharks. And, uh, We'll get you back in here, uh, back home next week for a couple against uh, Edward Waters to, to wrap up the home campaign. And uh, then we'll be finishing out on the road, I guess, the rest of the way. So mm -hmm. uh, not too many more chances to catch your Sand Shark baseball team in action. Be sure to get out and see them against Edward Waters next Tuesday. Uh, thanks for joining us on the show, Brian, yeah. and uh, best of luck this weekend. Go get a couple W's and, and move up those uh, conference standings. All right. Thank you, JJ.
Be right back with more here on Sand Shark Bites. At the University of South Carolina Beaufort, we offer small classes, individual attention, and an affordable education in an atmosphere that fosters diversity and achievement. We are students. We field nine Sand Shark sports teams that compete in the Sun Conference. We are athletes. We are one university with two campuses serving the coastal areas of South Carolina and Georgia. We are the low country. We are the fastest growing four-year school in the University of South Carolina system. We are USCB. Oh, it was great to hear from Coach Llewellyn, and uh, you know we talked about Jason Boulay having his priorities in order, and uh, it's pretty clear that that comes from the top down in that program. I mean, Brian Llewellyn uh, never hesitated about uh, you know telling Jason go for it if you need anything uh, along the way, you let me know, and uh, he has has definitely made it clear that uh, you know that's priority A number one. So uh, great to talk to Coach, and it's been great to talk with him throughout this process, and uh, and you know just kind of get to to know him on a, a little bit of a different level, uh, even though I've known him for a few years. Um, now it's time. It is time. It's, 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 it always comes down to this last little moment. The player of the week, and let me tell you, I was really worried about this on Monday. We had five Sun Conference players of the week, and I thought, how in the world am I going to choose one of them? It's, it's Spread be so nicely across incredibly athletics. hard to yeah. choose one. And then lo and behold, the, uh, the national voters came in, and they answered the question for me. They laid it in my lap, and they gave us our Player of the Week, and it's Ashley Lehman, you might have guessed. The National Softball Pitcher of the Week, Ashley Lehman. And here's the thing. She added to her resume after the fact. She, she wins that award. Uh, she goes nine scoreless innings in her first action in three weeks. She had a, a sore arm and sat out for three weeks, came back, looked like her old self again, dominant. Three scoreless innings against Georgia Gwinnett to pick up a win, and then she went uh, a six-inning complete game three-hitter against Thomas, a team that hadn't been shut out all year in 36 games. She goes and shuts them down. And then she comes back on Tuesday uh, after I knew she had won the award. The, the world didn't know yet, but I knew it. And uh, she throws another shutout, a five-inning shutout, uh, five-hitter against Middle Georgia. So she has now worked 14 scoreless innings since making her comeback. And uh, that's the Ashley Lehman we know and love. That's our reigning Sun Conference Pitcher of the Year. And uh, it's good to know that, that there was something wrong with her. That was, yeah, not, right, right. that was not her who took those uh, five losses early in the season. But now, with the two aces uh, back out in the circle, Christy Cook and Ashley Lehman, and uh, Kendall Jumper and Allie Rogers have gotten a chance and, and gained some confidence. This team is looking good going forward, and we are excited about the prospects as far as USCB uh, softball goes going into the conference tournament and even the national championship tournament. It's amazing. So we will have much more on that team and everything else as we go forward, and uh, we'll have a, a complete wrap-up next week on Sandshark Bites. We'll see you then. Until then, keep those fins up.